and Ted Keller, too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to you! From the Valley of the Jolly. From the Valley of the Jolly. Ho, ho, ho. Green Giants. Brilliant. Picture, if you will, a horror film based on a commercialized giant. Remove the canned vegetables, the green skin color, and the whimsical temperament, and replace that all with a mutated gargantua of a U.S. soldier with a notably unpleasant disposition, and you will no doubt have the key ingredients that encompass tonight's film. Welcome to Creature Features. I am your vegetable-loving host, Vincent. The little sprout to this side is my adorable housemate, Tangella, and the reluctant baritone over yonder is my otherwise cooperative butler, Mr. Livingston, and have we a truly phenomenal show for you. Firstly, as alluded to in the commencement, we shall present for your viewing pleasure a lovely film about a giant, namely War of the Colossal Beast from 1958. This film won neither an Academy Award nor a Golden Globe Award. It was also overlooked by the MTV Movie Awards and wasn't even considered for inclusion to the Sundance Film Festival. We believe these oversights by these much ballyhooed and overrated cinema contests simply shameful and outrageous. And tonight we shall strive to help rectify this miscarriage of justice by airing this incredible film for you. <sighs> what? Nothing. And joining us for this spectacular bonanza of 20 meter tall terror will be the wonderful Mindy Timberlake. You might remember Mindy from our Halloween episode last fall. She'll tell us about her lint collection, demonstrate some of her skating skills, and offer us a few juicy tidbits of trivia about tonight's film. Now, Tangela, as I've made somewhat rather clear prior, you mustn't use our guests to demonstrate the precision and accuracy of your homemade guillotine. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of mammosized fright, right here on Creature Features. Green giant veggie tots are actually quite delicious. Preposterous. Everyone knows their niblet's corn is the best. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Hello, Creature Feature friends! We just wanted to remind you that there are many methods to enjoy our dreaded little program. While most of you are likely watching from one of the numerous television stations that carry our show, and others are watching us on YouTube, there are other ways to watch as well. Frankly, I'm sure most of them have seen quite enough of this show. Shush. Some of you might already be aware that we have custom Creature Features apps for all the major set-top boxes. These are wonderful little devices that allow you to enjoy all kinds of free entertainment on your television set. We have an app for the Roku device, the Apple TV box, and for the wonderful Fire TV stick sold by Amazon. We've put a lot of work into developing these apps and we think you'll be surprised at what a wonderful method this is to watch our show. It's almost like watching Netflix, but it's all creature features all the time. And the image quality of the playback is incredible. It's perfect, just the way we want you to see our episodes. So if you have one of these amazing devices, go into their app store and download the Creature Features app. And if you don't have one, consider getting one soon. You'll love it. you also make this one quite happy. In 
it's that time of the week. You know what time it is, right, Mindy? What time is it? It's Creature Feature time. Everyone is here to watch Creature Features and to see you. They're not oh, here to see me. <laughs> no, I'm just like the orchestrator of things. So uh, welcome to the show. It is Creature Feature Night, and we are going to show a wonderful movie. We have a wonderful guest, and uh, we're going to have so much fun. I mean, Yay. and you've brought your skates. That's important. So I don't know if you all remember Mindy from back on Halloween. That was the last time you graced our guest chair. She's yes. been up to the mansion several times. She likes to hang out here. So, but uh, she offered to, to sit in the chair tonight and talk about some of the stuff she's doing, which is what? Yeah, it's actually been pretty exciting. I've started a new hobby. Which is? Collecting lint out of dryers. And what I do is I actually make little like animals and give them as gifts to people. Nice. I, you know, I have no response to that, but we're going to talk some more about that. And I, I see you brought your shiny skates. Those are wonderful. And I your, did. your rainbow socks. Are you celebrating a special time of month or? I'm actually celebrating my love for Starburst. Starburst the candy? Yes, I love Starburst. Oh, I, like I love the well. taste of the rainbow. Oh, wonderful. Well, they, they certainly match. All right, and then uh, we're going to watch this film, War of the Colossal Beast. Have you seen this? I have not. No, well, it's, it's going to be a surprise. It's, it's about a tall man. He's quite tall. No, he's like a giant. <laughs> no, he is exactly like a giant. So I suppose he is a giant, but he's like a giant as well. I was imagining how it'd be so fun to teach him how to roller skate. A roller skating giant that, yes. that could have ramifications that go beyond a, a sore bum when he falls. Yes. He could wipe out an entire civilization of small people. It could be a disaster. It could be. All right, let's uh, start this film. And when we come back, uh, we're going to talk some more with Miss Mindy Timberlake. So don't you dare go away. See you soon. Swanson. I'm running the gun club back in the hills. Swanson. Hmm? Ah, uh, what kind of a car? Dark green steak fed truck. Ten and a half, California license, loaded with groceries. Uh, where was it taken from? Eh, that's a hard question to answer. Look, here's what happened. 
The season opens next week, and I'm expecting a crowd down. So I was stocking up on supplies, bringing this truckload of groceries down from Calexico. Get the picture? Well, I'd left the club station wagon in San Felipe, get a new rear end put in. So when I got there, I had to stop and pick that up, too. Get the picture? Now, I couldn't run two cars, so I hired this kid to drive the truck. Started him out, oh, a couple, three hours ahead of me. Followed him in the station wagon. Get the picture? Well, he was supposed to meet me here. He hasn't arrived yet, and that was yesterday. Have you looked for him? Everywhere. Well, then he must have gone back to the club. Oh, I just came from there. Then you must have passed him up somewhere on the road from San Felipe. If I passed him on the road, don't you think I'd know my own truck? I'm sure you would, senor. But what if it went off the road? There's no place he can pull off the road without getting stuck in the sand. Then how could your truck be lost? If it wasn't lost, would I be coming to you? That is a good question, senor. Uh, tell me about this boy that was driving it. Uh, what's his name? Miguel, something or other, uh, 15, 16 years old, dark, thin, but, oh, but so high. Would you know him if you saw him? Yes. Come across the street with me, senor. That's him. Where's my truck? Ah, un momento. What's the matter with him? Doctor, ¿qué cree usted que tiene el chamaco? El chamaco está muy grave. Aún no ha recuperado de su tensión nerviosa, señor. Miguel is a very sick boy. He's suffering from shock. What from? ¿Qué cree usted que fue la causa, doctor? Pues, ¿quién sabe? Nobody seems to know. What did you do with my truck? Miguel. El señor quiere saber qué hizo con el camión. Contésteme. ¿Qué hizo con el camión? ¿Qué te pasó? Más fuerte. Mire, doctor, si se pone mejor el paciente, haga favor de notificarme. ¿eh? Muy bien, así lo haré. ¿Qué dice? It's no use. If he gets any better, the doctor will let us know. Come with me. I will take you to the place where he was found. truck make these tracks? Must have. I had two new retreads like that on the rear. Uh -huh. Came down the road, they got stuck. Yeah. Then where'd it go? Straight up in the air, it looks like. Look, that truck had a radio and a heater, but it didn't have wings. Now you're gonna find it, or aren't you? Look, senor, I am just a country policeman. I am paid to keep the peace. If someone steals, I try to catch the thief and put him in jail, like it says in the book. But about this, senor, I don't know. Uh, the book doesn't say anything about a thing like this. And that's the latest report on the international scene. Now on the lighter side of the news. A dispatch from Guavas, Mexico, says that Mr. John Swanson is having a little trouble collecting insurance on his stolen truck. What happened to it? Well, according to his claim report, it disappeared without leaving any tracks. Mr. Swanson says something must have carried off his truck. Now, what could have carried off his truck? And here in Los Angeles, the city council has decided to vote upon the referendum for increasing the pay of teachers. With the interest that has recently been aroused regarding the importance of better schools, it is possible Operator, I want to place a person-to-person -person call to Mr. John Swanson in Guavos, Mexico. I'll hold the line. I'm getting me a good lawyer. And if one ain't enough, I'm getting two. I'm going to make that insurance company pay up and pay up fast. I'm taking them to court by the... I'm sorry. I, I guess I shouldn't blow my top like that. 
But when somebody calls me a liar, I... Excuse me. Joyce Manning? Yes. You must be Major Baird. Please come in. Thank you. This is Mr. Swanson, Major Baird. How do you do, sir? Howdy. Please be seated. Thank you. Would you like a drink? Uh, no, thanks. Mr. Swanson was good enough to come up here and tell me of his experiences. No, it was a mere nothing. I had to be in Los Angeles anyway today to see the insurance people. Have I missed much? Well, he tells me that he wasn't there to see what happened to his truck. No, I, I guess I got there just too late. Besides the trucks not being there, did you see anything unusual? Like what? Tracks in the sand. Well, there were car tracks, sure. But no animal tracks? Animal tracks? Human footprints, Mr. Swanson. Well, what's so unusual about that? These would be the tracks of a big man, a very big man. Well, there were Miguel's. Uh, I don't get the picture. How big do you mean? Very big. Ten times as big as you. Are you trying to kid me? Not at all. I'm trying to find my brother. You got a bad dose of radiation poisoning in the course of testing a plutonium bomb. He started growing at the rate of eight to ten feet a day. You may have read about him. Sure. Colonel Glenn Manning, the colossal man. I remember. Glenn had reached a height of over 60 feet when he disappeared. Well, didn't he get shot and fall off a boulder dam and get killed? That's right. But Miss Manning seems to have an idea that he survived both the artillery fire and the fall. That is what you're getting at, isn't it? I'll leave it up to Mr. Swanson. Wouldn't that account for the disappearance of your truck? Look, lady, leave me out of this. I didn't see no footprints. I didn't see no giant. I didn't see anything. I've got enough trouble with the insurance company as it is. Get the picture? Uh, I gotta be going. Can you think of anyone else who might help me? There's a boy named Miguel down there, but he's not doing any talking. Doctor said he's suffering from shock or something. I'm sorry I can't do you more good, Miss Manning. Thank you for coming, Mr. Swanson. Good day. Goodbye. Hadn't you better give him up, Miss Manning? The Army did some time ago. You never found his body. The river below the dam is a mile deep in some places. His body's down there somewhere, and it'll show up in time. You think Glenn made his way down that river somehow and reached the Gulf of California, don't you? Believe me, it's impossible. I was in charge of the search for him, and I know. The medical authorities all agree no man, no matter what his size, could take those two bazooka charges and a drop of over 700 feet and come through it alive. Well, those are the facts. Take my advice and face them. I shall, Major. Well, thank you for coming. I'm afraid it wasn't worth your while. It could be if you'd have dinner with me this evening. Oh, I'd like to, but I can't. I'm leaving for Mexico right away. Goodbye. Goodbye. Of the show stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching War of the Colossal Beast with a lovely Mindy Timberlake. Uh, quickly, before we get to you, this film, something happened to that poor FedEx man. Oh, really? Yeah, I what think happened? the giant tossed him out of his lorry. Oh, no. Oh, well, we haven't not seen the giant yet, but I've seen photographs, and I think this, this giant is tall enough to pull this off. Unless it was a giant claw, could this be a merger between the giant claw and... It's just it is. No, no. It's, it's set in the same location, right? Right? The giant claw, did you ever see that one? It's, he's got a giant claw. It's a I bird. Have, I have not seen that one. No, all right. We're going to we're gonna have to watch this, that one off night one night. So uh, anyways, uh, enough of this film. Let's talk about you. Last time you were here, you were telling us you were doing a thing where you train dogs how to operate roller skates. That is correct. Yes, I 
have been training dogs to roller skate. And actually since then, we have been traveling, like a little traveling troupe and performing. So this is like a circus that you do for whom? No, th this is, these are serious performers. And so I don't understand how you place a skate on a dog paw. They're just like little, little tiny skates and you lace them up on their little paw. Are they like tiny dogs? No, there's, there's some large dogs, some small dogs. It's quite the menagerie. So uh, do you ever have any trouble with, say, the Humane Society, anything like this? No, we've actually adopted quite a few. They live a pretty good life. So a poor dog gets lost. He gets captured by the SPCA. He's adopted by your troop, and he's forced to roller skate. That's, that's somewhat rather horrid, is it not? They love it. They love it. All right. Well, you know, there's nothing wrong, I suppose, if they, if they like it. And I suppose you, you pay them well. I do. I pay them with lots of good treats. Treats. All right. All right. Now, as far as you go, you roller skate as well. Sometimes you do ice skating, right? I do, yes. And which do you prefer, ice or asphalt? Oh, I definitely prefer the asphalt with my doggy troop. Right, because they cannot ice skate. No, but we're working on it. Yes. So we'll see. You know, that's going to be quite an ice capade if you can get canines to ice skate. Yes. I mean, I imagine the, the blades must be small. The technicalities, you know, she's actually quite technical. She actually wells things. Like, you know, you cannot buy from a store the tiny skates or a, a chihuahua. That right? is correct. I actually personally weld them That's and fit them. So they're all custom skates for all right, the dogs. Right. So. so she has a technical degree, I imagine. All right, what do you say we get back to this film? And then uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about your lint thing. Sounds good. All right, off we go back to War of the Colossal Beast, 1958. See you soon. That is the boy, Miguel. Has he told you anything yet? No, but you can question him if you like. He's supposed to speak a little English. Miguel. Miguel. You see, senorita, you better come with me. I will find a place for you to spend the night. Thanks, but I'm going to stay here. All night? So long as necessary. Then my wife better get you something to eat. Thank you. I do not understand what he's trying to say, senorita. Call me if he speaks again. Miguel. Miguel. Calmate. Miguel. Miguel. Calmate. What does he mean? Ah, it's hard to say. Oh, Brome, what is that? It's a, a big fellow, like an ogre in a story, a monster, a, a giant man. He must have been dreaming. Was it a giant, Miguel? Was it a giant man? Was it Miguel? We left within an hour after I got your phone call. This is Dr. Carmichael. He's head of our radiation exposure. He's very much interested in your brother's case. I only hope I can do something for him, Miss Manning. Thank you, Doctor. 
Uh, Dr. Carmichael, Major Baird, this is Sergeant Murillo of the Mexican State Police. Where was it the boy saw the colossal man, the giant? El Hombron? Uh, he has not been able to tell us. The sergeant can show you where the truck disappeared, though. You see, senor, won't you get in my automobile? Fine. This is where the boy Miguel was found. These tracks were made by the truck he was driving. The truck apparently skidded into the water. It never drove out. What do you think, Mark? Uh, it seems like pretty meager evidence to conclude because a truck disappeared that the colossal man's still alive. But the boy. Oh, I'm sure there's some logical explanation. Senores! Senores! Come quickly! That is a very big footprint. Major Baird, is that enough logic for you? The foot that made that print is about 10 times the size of a normal man. That would make him about 60 feet tall. Glenn was 60 feet tall. He must have gone that way, to the mountains. You think he could be up in those mountains? Yes, it could be. There are no people up there. Well, let's drive slowly. Maybe we could find some more footprints. The ground is too hard here. But I see something over there. Let's take a look. This must be part of Swanson's missing truck. No, this is another truck, senorita. Swanson struck his dark green bed state, ten and a half. Nothing but a rock slide. It is getting late. We better go home. It is not good to be here after dark. I have plenty. Sorry to be so long, but I just talked to the Mexican military authorities on the phone. They have troops and artillery standing by. All we have to do is pinpoint the colossal man, and they'll move in on him. He might come willingly if we reasoned with him. How do you reason with a 60-foot giant? It's possible he'd listen to somebody he knows well, like Miss Manning. Why not try it? No, I, I don't want anybody getting hurt. Please let me try, at least. No, I'm sorry. Be reasonable. If you use force on him, somebody will get hurt. Very well, then. I'll go alone. Wait. Wait, Miss Manning. Miss Manning. I didn't ask for this job. I was assigned to it. And if I'm going to get it done, I'll have to handle it my own way. Well, it seems to me your way is going to hurt him more than help him. I have to think of the safety of others as well as him. That goes for you, too. I'm to forget he's my brother and do nothing, I suppose. Well, it's natural for you to be concerned about him. But can't you let it go at that? Well, you don't even know if he'll recognize you or not. 
Let me find out. We'll see about it tomorrow when the soldiers arrive. Oh, today, please, before they get here. Please. What makes you so sure you're going to find him? Well, he has a whole mountain range to hide in. Oh, we have something to go on, those footprints. All right, get in my car. trucks for food to live on. This was a rifle. Major, look at this. It's his thumbprint. This was Swanson's truck. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. Miss Mindy stepped away. Where'd she go? She had to change something. Oh. She, she went to put on a different pair of skates, I think. Well, there's something about lint. Lint? No, no, we're not doing lint. All right. So, uh, anyways, uh, letter time. You folks send us letters, and if we don't read your mail, you'll become quite angry with us. So, we don't want that to happen. So, we're going to read mail, right? Right. Right. All right. What do you got for me, Mr. Livingston? Mr. McFerrin from Walnut Creek. McFerrin? I wonder if he's related to Bobby. Bobby McFerrin. Don't worry, be happy. I don't know this song. I've never heard it in my life. All right, let's see what it is. This looks like a card. No, it's not a card. It's a letter. Good Lord, this man writes small. All right, a true fan, Jim McFerrin. Dear Creature Features Trio. So that means me, you, and her. Well done, sir. Right. No. Well, it does not take rocket science to figure that out. Vincent, I recently discovered your show, 9 p.m. on Saturday night, several months ago, and have been a fan favorite. I enjoy your discussions with diverse guests on their past and present endeavors. 
Uh, Livingston is a stoic and sophisticated butler. Does he have a smile? He's smiling right now. Tangela is quite quirky but lovable young woman. Can she speak? She never shuts up, except for you guys. I enjoy watching your black and white sci-fi movies and have a few suggestions if possible. The Thing from Outer Space with James Arnett as The Thing. James Arness was a thing. He was the thing. I suppose so. <clears throat> uh, the Day the Earth Stood Still with Michael Rennie and his famous four words, Gort Platu Mrada Niktu. The Giant Robot is a classic. You know, we tried to get that one and there's some issues with that. Technicality. No, Netflix owns it, I think. And Netflix won't let the stuff go away from here. So, uh, Bob Wilkins and his cigar was great. But Vincent, your reboot of Creature Features is held in high regards by me and many others. Keep up your inspirational program. A true fan, Jim McLaren. Well, thank you so much, Jim. It was nice. And, you know, we'll take a look at that other movie with James Arness, but uh, the other one, not so much. You could probably see that one on Sven Gulli. You ever watch that show? No. It's interesting. No, it's like our show, but different. We have a, a package. A package. package. I rarely watch this one. Huh? I rarely watch this one. Oh, good. I don't blame you. I wouldn't watch it either. No, yeah, well, it's like watching it twice. All right, what do we got? This is from Norma, Joe, and family. Norma, Joe, and family from Redwood City, California. Yeah, there's not too many Norma Joes in Redwood City, California. So people in Redwood City, California watching us right now, you probably know Norma Joe because she's probably the only one, right? More than likely. Maybe. Greetings. <laughs> These stuffed creatures have been sent as a special gift from our realm. Look, she's not even paying attention. They have been damned to the lament dimension to spend eternity with the Canabites. I, you know, I have no idea what Bible she's reading from, but I've never read this one. Included are some pins with which to play with them. All right. You know, open this because I have no idea with what she speaks. Uh... They like it if you ask them questions, and they may answer in your dreams. Oh, my goodness. Look at those. We love the show, Norman, Joe, and family. Well, thank you so much for the voodoo dolls. Those are lovely. They look like they're handmade sock dolls. And there's pins. Yeah, she loves doing this voodoo thing. I don't know if this is something we should encourage, Norma Joe. but thanks for the package. Next up, Mr. Livingston. From Windsor, California. Windsor, I know this place. You know, they used to have a water slide in Windsor. A what? It was called Windsor Waterworks. No, yeah. it was it was like the only water slide within the the postal codes in this area. No, no it's not there anymore. Oh dear, look at this. Oh, it's a for check that. for fifty dollars from L Loretta Toth. This is wonderful. You know, people are just sending us money. Hmm. I, I, you know, I love it. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but uh, this is wonderful. Maybe we'll use it towards getting uh, James Arness in that film, right? Perhaps. Perhaps. All right. Uh, from Loretta in Windsor. She goes, Dear Vince, Mr. Livingston, and of course, Tangella, thank you for a very enjoyable show. I hope very much that you keep it on the air as I consider it something of a good luck charm. Here's a check. I hope it'll help. It'll definitely help Loretta, and uh, we hope things are fine in Windsor. And, uh, you know, if you ever open a water slide again, you'll see me there, dressed like this. Is that it? One more. Last letter Atlanta, of the... Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta. I love Atlanta. You know, the people there are so nice. Quite. No, they're some of the friendliest people in the world are in Atlanta, Georgia. All right, uh, this is from Ted Fleek in Atlanta, Georgia. And he goes, Dear Vince... I'll never forget the first time I saw you host this show, but I'll keep trying. You are more disappointing than an unsalted pretzel. You have a face made for radio and a voice made for print. You know, this, this does not seem like a man from Atlanta. Don't be ashamed of who you are. That's your parents' job. Someday you'll go far, and I hope you'll remain there. Yours truly, Ted Fleek. I don't think Ted Fleek actually lives in Atlanta, Georgia. Because you know, I know the people there are much nicer. I don't think he likes you. No, well, <clears throat> I, it's self-evident. 
Well, that's it for letters. If you'd like to send us a letter yourself by email, like Ted in not from Atlanta, Georgia, send it to the email address you see appearing down here. If you'd like to send a wonderful package uh, or card with a check in it, send it to the address you see right here. We'll be right back with Mindy soon, but first let's get back to War of the Colossal Beast. They are baking it the way you want it, senor. I think it's all right. When will the rest be done? They say it would be ready soon. They are already loading the truck. Good. Try it. Have you tasted anything? Tastes like bread. What's in it? Chloral hydrate, enough to put him to sleep for eight hours. I'll be at the bakery. We have to capture him, and this seems to be the best way. Dr. Carmichael says it can't harm him in the least. Isn't there any other way to handle it? Well, it's that or let the Mexican authorities deal with him. We have no other alternatives. Nobody's taken the time to think of any, as far as I can see. There isn't time to take. If we don't get him before he decides to move to another mountain, we may lose contact with him for weeks. I suppose you're right. His face. I can't forget how horrible it was. Where are you from, Joyce? Well, my home is in San Francisco. Don't you think you'd be better off back there? Do you know what it would be like to be just sitting around waiting for news? You mind if I suggest a remedy? It's an old one, but it usually works. Find something else to occupy your mind. Do you have a job? I write copy for an advertising agency. Well, that should help you forget your troubles. I can imagine myself going back to writing all those tired old adjectives. Tremendous, gigantic, colossal. You know what they'd mean to me now, don't you? Glenn. A colossal freak, Major. And he's my brother. We're all set, Major. Swanson's truck. You think he leaked the stuff? All depends on his appetite. There hasn't been a truck through this road for two days now. He should be hungry. Let me drive. I know this road best. All right. There's still no sign of him. If we don't make contact, we'll make the trip again. this way to make you nervous, senores. But the faster we go, the more dust we make, and the further away we will show. Besides, giants run very fast. They have long legs.
Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features. I'm with Mindy Timberlake. We are watching War of the Colossal Beasts. I like this film. What about you? Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, this thing about him breaking into the trucks, you know, that's a bit confusing to me. Well, I, I think that he needs to eat. He needs some snacks. So he's breaking into food trucks. Yes. In Mexico. Because he prefers Mexican food. You know, I would do the same thing if I was a giant, you know, if you could pick any country to go steal truck food from, I would go to Mexico because I'd prefer the food down there than I wouldn't say Canada. I mean, what does Canada make? Maple syrup? Pancakes? I like Canada, but I don't know what, Canadian bacon. All right, I would go out for the Canadian bacon, although that would probably mean I'd have to make my own, right? <laughs> Enough about this. Let's talk about you and this, what is it, a hobby, a business? Which one? The, 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 lint, the lint Yes, so I've been going to friends' house, houses and I've been offering to clean their dryers in exchange to take their lint and make I, small figurines. Do you actually have to negotiate this? I mean, couldn't you just simply say, may I have your dryer lint? I have right. before. All right, so you take the dryer lint and then what? So then I, I have tweezers and I have... I basically make little sculptures and figurines. So your tool of the trade is a tweezer. A tweezer, yeah. So it's, it must be a meticulous hook. Uh, you did not bring any, but we have photos yes. that you brought. And the first one we're going to show right now. And it looks like, uh, it looks like a couple. Uh, it looks like, what are those, little ghost people? Uh, no, that's Donnie and Marie. Donnie and Marie Osmond? Yes. The musicians? Yes. Oh, all right. I, I suppose, uh, yeah, no, if I squint, I can see that. All right, so you do celebrities, and then yes. now we're going to show another photo here. Oh, this looks like an animal of some kind. What is this, uh, an elephant? It's actually an ostrich. It just has, has a short neck, and you notice the vibrant colors. Sometimes I go to laundromats where there's a big assortment of colors if I'm lucky, oh. if I gather enough. Right. So an ostrich with a short neck. Yes. All right. No, well, this is this is rather fascinating. I mean, is is there like a, a career track with this, or is this something that uh, is purely for fun? I've I've been selling some, but I like to give them as gifts as well. Maybe I'll make you one too. Uh, that would be absolutely lovely. All right, well, what do you say we get back to this film? Let's do it. Sounds All right, good. off we go to War of the Colossal Beast. And uh, there will be no lit creatures in this movie. However, uh, maybe at the end, there'll be a small surprise. Don't go away. The case of Army Colonel Glenn Manning, the colossal man who went berserk in Las Vegas not long ago, is in the news again today. Military authorities last night admitted that the earlier announcement he had been accidentally destroyed was an error. He was captured alive today in Mexico. And plans are underway to fly him back across the border in a troop carrier transport. You may quote me as saying that the nation and its representatives in Congress have nothing but gratitude for our sister republic south of the border, for their unstinting cooperation. And we're proud of Major Baird, 
and the way he handled the problem of the colossal man. It was a good job all around. Well, now that he's being brought back to the United States, what does Congress plan to do about him? Uh, do about whom? Why, the giant man. Oh, as, as far as I know, that matter doesn't come under congressional jurisdiction. Uh, I was given to understand the Department of Medical Research takes over from this point on. There's nothing in our directives about the disposition of a 60-foot giant. Naturally, we'll do what we can in a scientific way. But it's impossible for this department to assume the responsibility of his feeding and custody. Why don't you take this question up with the Health and Welfare Department? <laughs> Yes, the Manning case was referred to us here at Health and Welfare, but we found it lay outside the scope of our original appropriation. I have an idea it was turned over to Congress for action during the present session. I can't imagine who told you to call me. The problem isn't one for the legislative branch to settle. Uh, why don't you call the Pentagon? <laughs> Tell the pilot to circle the field once more. US-11034, you are to circle the field again. Roger. He has enough fuel left for five more minutes, Mayor. I can't understand you're not giving your permission for him to land under those circumstances. I think I've made our position pretty clear. We have no facilities for a giant here. When that plane runs out of gas, it's coming down whether you like it or not. It can't stay any longer than is necessary to refuel and take off again. Take off for where? We need time to decide what to do with him. Can't you find us a warehouse to keep him in temporarily? Our warehouses are all located in the heart of the city. This creature's presence there would constitute too great a police problem. Now, that applies to every other large downtown building, including the Coliseum. Have you considered the Hollywood Bowl? We can't leave him exposed to the weather, even if he is a giant. Well, I can't make any further suggestions. That hangar doesn't seem to be in use. Well, that's impossible. This airport is one of the major traffic centers of the Western world. You realize what it would mean if an uncontrollable monster should get loose here? I give you my word. We won't keep him here a minute longer than is absolutely necessary. All right. You may tell the ship to come in for a landing. Troop carrier US-11034, you may land on runway 170. Glenn here at the airport. Well, I'm holding him here till Washington decides what to do with him. What to do with him? He ought to be in a hospital getting treatment. They don't make hospitals that big, Joyce. Besides, as yet, the doctors haven't turned up anything that can help him. Why don't they treat him with sulfahydryl? Isn't that what they said would cure him? Well, they found it stopped his growth, but I'm afraid it won't reverse it. I see. Well, they can't keep him here as if he was some kind of cattle. It's just for the time being. I'm afraid the world doesn't think of a 60-foot man the way a sister does. necessary to keep him tied down like this. If I could trust him, I could let him have more freedom. As it is, I have to play it safe. Glenn Manning! As you see, he doesn't even know his name. Colonel Manning! Colonel Manning! Hollywood, California. Dude, 
I think we should start a band together. I mean, I need a guy who can play bass. We both like horror movies. And a butler, he's one spooky dude. Does uh, he play the drums? Hello, this is Livingston. Apparently, one of my newly acquired domestic duties is to request help for our show financially by asking you to visit our patron page. Your generosity will help keep Creature Features on the air, which I'm not entirely sure is a good thing. However, with only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new programming each week, which apparently some of you curiously enjoy. And should you have a desire to give even more, you might even receive a gift from Miss Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching War of the Colossus Beast with roller skater extraordinaire Mindy Oops. Timberlake, who could not sit still for another segment, so she decided to uh, stretch her legs and uh, show us some of her skills. You know, you're pretty good at going over that audio cable. Um, so uh, anyways, quickly on the movie, which I'm not entirely sure she's watching anymore, uh, our giant friend has been captured. Oh, yeah? And now he's being shipped back to the USA because he caused far too much trouble for our friends down in Mexico, and uh, they decided to send him back. So, uh, anyways, that's the film, and it's a good film. We're going to continue with that in a moment. But, um, you know, I have some roller, roller skate questions for you. Yes. This, this sport, this game they call roller derby. Yes. I, you know, I don't understand how that works. What's, what's the rules on that? So I just have been learning. I think that there's basically a queen at the front, and she's wearing a tiara. And then her princesses and lady in, ladies in waiting all beat each other up and try to get the crown. You know, I, I know a little bit about how royalty works coming from the UK. And, you know, I, I know the queen did not have to beat up somebody on roller skates to become the queen and wear her tiara. So this, this must be like some kind of fabrication of the royal system, I believe. No? <laughs> Something like that? Something like that. I've never mm -hmm. actually played roller derby. Oh. And I didn't actually win this crown either. Well, I, you know, perhaps you should, you know, you're, you're quite good at this game because you're thank you. so talented at going around in circles. You'll actually make me somewhat dizzy. And that would, be, that would be a good technique to use against your opponents to make them dizzy and make them fall, right? Indeed, that would be a good technique. That, that would be. All right. Well, before I get dizzy and fall out of my chair, let's say we get back to War the Colossal Beast and watch uh, a giant maybe roller skate or not. We'll see. Ooh, that would be fun. Don't go away.
Injection. I doubt if we'll get a second chance. You ready? One, two, three. The guard is reaching down. Ah! Uh -huh. 
would do better than tear gas. Get some here on the double. Captain, get reinforcements. What are you going to do to him? I don't know, but I can't let him loose among a million people. Are you going to have to kill him? If it comes down to it, I will. I'm responsible don't, for the lives of others don't, first. Don't, please, him don't, second. God, don't, please. Sergeant! Don't, don't. See that Miss Manning gets back to her hotel and stays there. <laughs> Stay at Hotel E on Courthouse Square in Santa Rosa. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. I think I should have my hair dyed your colour, and then I can wear a tiara like you. You know, I've tried that tiara before. It does not look appropriate with my colour hair. You should do it. I, I, I think I will. Welcome back to the show where we are watching War of the Colossal Beast. But uh, we're going to do that thing where we show a fun commercial that you haven't seen in a long time or maybe you've never seen before. And it's a, it's a commercial that I personally picked 
because I, I find it humorous. So uh, let's roll FedEx stick. Next time, use FedEx. And that was FedEx Stick. What did you think about that commercial? It was so sad how he kicked the little dinosaur. Well, he, he, the big dinosaur got his revenge though, right? I guess so. Yes. All right, let's get back to War of the Colossal Beast. And uh, when we come back, we're going to get some more information from Mindy about what she does. Don't go away. City Council's up in arms about this. The public has a right to protection, you know. Well, we understand your position, Mr. Mayor. I came out from Washington for the sole purpose of straightening this thing out. And we're here to decide what's to be done. He's safe now, is he? Well, he's too weak to break loose at the moment. He lost considerable blood in his attempt to escape. Besides that, we've taken extra precautions with him. Let me show you. We keep a watch on him night and day. Those manacles were specially wrought to stand 10 times his estimated strength. We have them anchored in cement, weighing two tons and sunk 12 feet in the earth. Guards have been doubled, and we keep a reserve force on standby duty. And there's not much chance he'll give us any more trouble for the time being. Well, you certainly have taken measures, but you can't expect to keep him here for life. Have you any idea what'll happen to him eventually? Well, that depends. Do you see any hope that he'll ever improve? Well, I'd rather have you ask Dr. Carmichael. Dr. Carmichael! Dr. Carmichael, the mayor. Doctor. Yeah. General Nelson. How do you do, General? What can you tell him about your patient, Doctor? Well, the big question now is his mind. He may be suffering from amnesia, shell shock, loss of memory, whatever you want to call it. In that case, we have techniques now that will bring him out of it. On the other hand, if his brain tissue has suffered injury, he'll be a psychopathic case and a menace until he dies. Is there any way of telling? An examination would do that. How soon can you proceed with it? Almost immediately. Well, please do so. We'll decide what's to be done with Manning as soon as we have the doctor's findings. We'll keep you posted, gentlemen. And I'll check with you before I return to Washington, Major. Yes, sir. But I tell you, a man's life depends on this plasma. I know 10 gallons is a lot, but Dr. Carmichael explained the case to you this morning. I can't sit here and argue about it. It's needed right away. Just a moment, please. Dr. Carmichael. Will you talk to the Red Cross people, please? They refuse to send any more plasma for Glenn. They say we've used too much already. Mark. This is Major Baird. My men and I will see that you get back all the blood we use for this case. Now you send over what we need immediately. Thank you. Goodbye. They'll have it here in half an hour. Oh, Major, wait. I want to thank you. Forget it. I'm sorry for what I said yesterday. I know you've tried to save Glenn as much as you could. You look tired, Joyce. Isn't it time you went home? I suppose it is. There's an army car waiting outside, if you'd like to go home in that. With a soldier to see me to the door? This time I'll do it myself.
stimulus is an electroencephalograph. It records impulses set off by different parts of the brain. It records them on this paper, making these wavy lines. Now, we're going to try to stimulate your brother's mind with various ideas. If one happens to arouse a response, it will cause a tiny electric current to occur in his brain, and that, in turn, will be greatly amplified by this machine. So it will register on this paper. What will that tell us? If he responds to anything, it means curable amnesia. If not... I understand. Will you get this now, please? I'll be down in a minute. I'll get the instrument ready. Can you hook this up, please? Bill, bring a projector. Set it up over there. Is the screen going to be all right up there, Doctor? Yes, that's fine. Dr. Richardson? Never seen such dreadful facial injuries. How were they sustained? When he fell from Boulder Dam, he must have hit his head on the rocks. Of course, the wounds went untended, so scar tissue formed as you see it. The shock of such a fall would indicate the possibility of amnesia, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. I don't understand it. I get a normal nervous reaction. That's certainly not typical of amnesia. Looks like brain trauma, I'm afraid. Are you ready for the association tests? Are you ready, Phil? Let's have the first slide. Glenn Manning! Look at the picture in front of you. Does it mean anything to you? You went to college there, Manning. Try another, we're not getting any response. Look again, Manny. Look at this ship. It brought you back to this country after your service in Korea. Try another. Look at this, Manny. Look at this face. Do you recognize it? Does this man mean anything to you? Look at it, Manning. Do you understand? It's your face. What do you think, Doctor? I don't see any use continuing. He doesn't seem to respond. Let me try, please. You must remember, Glenn. Try. Your childhood. Remember your bicycle, Glenn? It was red and it had a light on it. Oh, we had fun when we were kids, didn't we, Glenn? Your first high school date, when Dad let you take the car, you were so proud. Oh, you must remember, Glenn.
This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are watching War of the Colossal Beast. It's a it's a long name for a film, right? It is a long name. I mean, you know, it's it's like they had to make me a sign because I kept making it saying it wrong. Anyways, uh, so this beast has now been captured and he's tied up and yeah, he sure he sure groans a lot. Now, well, you know, I don't think he has the ability to speak. Hmm. I think I think most giants lose their vocal cords it's you know i i believe it could be like a, a medical phenomenon where they grow large but their vocal cords stay the same size hmm. i could be wrong i don't know anyway so uh, so uh besides the uh the 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 whole lint creature thing that you do do you have any other crafty hobbies that you're getting into actually yes i recently I began collecting seashells and oh, nice. been decorating toilet seats with, with them. Toilet seats, like the part you sit on the commode? Yep. With seashells? Yes. So, if I understand correctly, you glue seashells. I do. I glue them right on there. Some are more comfortable than others. Sometimes you get a couple pokey ones. but I, I imagine that's a, quite a painful way to go. But they look so beautiful. I'm sure they're quite lovely. That's 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 brilliant. All right. Well, what do you say we get back to this film? Yes. No. Yes. 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 Let's get back to the film, uh, War of the Colossal Beast. And uh, when we come back, we're going to find out what uh, Mindy is doing next. So don't you dare go away, please. <laughs> Get your orders? They're shipping him out tomorrow morning. The Navy has a ship ready to take him to the island. It's a small one, about 60 miles off the coast. That doesn't leave us much time. It'll take all night to get him ready. Told the yours yet? No. You'd better. She's at her hotel. Well, I'll see you back here in about a half an hour. Well provided for. An airlift is being set up and food will be parachuted down to him. He'll be supplied with everything he needs. Just the same, it's horrible. There's no place in the civilized world for a creature that big. You see what's happened to him. He'll be happier by himself. Oh, I suppose I should agree with you, but I can't help feeling terribly sorry for him. Well, look at it this way. Glenn has become a total stranger to you. Not your brother anymore, but a monster with the instincts of a wild beast and there's nothing you and i or anyone else can do that will ever change him back to what he once was
alone on this island? The Navy will land an inspection party every month. Oh, I'd like to go with them if I can. I thought you would, so it's been arranged for you. Good night, Joyce. Oh, wait. I know you've done everything you can for him, Mark. And for me. Thank you. Hello? Major Baird? Just a moment. He's right here. Major Baird here. When? Well, he was checked okay just ten minutes ago. Glenn has escaped. Let me speak to Dr. Carmichael. I can't, sir. He's dead. This is an all-points bulletin. The colossal man is loose in Los Angeles. All units report immediately upon contact. I repeat, the colossal man is loose in Los Angeles. All units report immediately upon contact. Will they know where you are? Yes, I told Harris would be here in the office waiting for news. Let me have the police department. I'm calling for Major Baird. Oh, yes, we know he's escaped. Has he been sighted yet? I see. Thank you. No police reports. He hasn't been seen. Where could he be? Baird here. He's been spotted in Griffith Park. Do you have a map? Yes, I've got the map of Griffith Park right here. Order up the armored artillery. We'll surround the area and move the infantry in on him till we make contact. Don't open fire until he's isolated from all civilians, and then only if absolutely necessary. Have the police block off all access roads. Move up our communications. We'll set up field headquarters in the hills. I'll take command. Right. All right, man, here it is. Attention all units, attention all units. The colossal man is in the Griffith Park area. Car 42, 52, and 61 proceed to the Riverside Drive entrance. Cars 40, 41, and 46 proceed to the Ferndale entrance. Roadblocks will be set up at once. We interrupt our regular program to bring you a special police bulletin. The colossal man has broken loose and is now known to be in the vicinity of Griffith Park. Steps are being taken to recapture him. Do not go near the area. I repeat, do not go near the area. You may endanger your life by doing so, and you are certain to impede emergency services which need all the space they can get. Hairstyling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. for a load of kids. Where are they? In the Griffith Observatory, looking for a Sputnik or something. Well, hurry them up and get out of the park as quick as you can. What's gonna happen? There's trouble. The giant man's on the loose around here. Let's go, hurry it up, all aboard. Here. He's somewhere between us and the observatory up there.
is Major Baird at the Griffith Park roadblock. All light units, turn your lights on. Ladies and gentlemen, you're witnessing a manhunt for the biggest man in existence. We're in Griffith Park. It's been surrounded by troops. They're moving up to try to make contact. That building you see up there is the Griffith Observatory. Now the searchlights are swinging over to our left. I want a tour to cover the mountain on all sides particularly here and here. in a rocket ship. What's to stop me? They've got all the problems solved. You wouldn't have anybody to talk to. It's cold up here. I wish Mom would have made me bring my coat. I talked to all the people back on Earth by radio. Maybe I'd even call you, Lori. Lori! Then when your father's objecting to you talking on the phone too long, you just tell him it was someone on the moon. Uh, that wouldn't make any difference to my father. Arthur! I wonder what's going on down there. Maybe the Martians have landed. The teacher's been calling us. Let her call. Boy, look at all those searchlights. I'd like you to meet some of the officers working here with the Army to restore order. A any trouble with the uh, public causing congestion in the disaster area? Not this time. They seem to be keeping the roads pretty well open for us. I understand you were able to get everyone out of the park before anything could happen to them. That's right. Now, we really appreciate you men at a time like this. Oh, officer, there was a school bus from Westmont Junior High up at the planetarium tonight. Did you see it come down? All cars were checked out of the park some time ago. Are you sure? My daughter Lori was on it. I've been waiting for her down at the corner. You see, we live in Glendale, and I thought if I picked her up here and drove her home, she could get her sleep. She has to get up so early in the morning on school days. Well, I brought her coat in case she's cold. Oh, wait a minute, and I'll check. Thank you. Arthur! Lori! We better go now. There's nothing for you to worry about. The bus is still up there, but it seems to be safe. Can't I go through? Let me go to Lori, please. She ought to have her coat. I wanted her to take it when she left the house this morning. Only I forgot to remind her. She'll be all right without it. Just you take it easy and wait right here. Lori Edwards and Arthur Lang, where have you been? Oh, over there, watching the lights. There are a lot of people down Let's there. Let's go. Something's the matter. Well, get in the bus. Quickly, we have to go. Look! Look at the giant! <laughs> Give yourself up, Glenn. Give yourself up. So 
Surrender yourself or you will be destroyed. Colossal Beast. What did you think of this film, love? You liked it? She liked it. She likes movies with giants. What did you think of the film, Mindy? I really liked it. Well, you know, I, I think Mindy would like any film we would have shown tonight. She just, she's just like a, a big film fan, right? Just, Indeed. You, I no, really you, enjoyed it. You do like films. So, um, anyway, so what, do you, what are you doing next, Mindy? Well, I've got to go work on helping some of my some of my dogs roller skate. Dogs roller skate, yeah, right? So. Right. And if if somebody wants to train their dogs to roller skate, can can you help them? Absolutely. Just go to my website. All right. And and what is that website? Oh, I don't have one yet. Oh. I'll let you know. All right. All right. Well, when that information becomes available, I will will present it here for everyone to see. 
So, uh, all right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Mindy, and doing your roller skate thing. And Thank uh, you for having me. Yes, no, the place is entirely ours. As far as you guys go, thank you so much for watching our program. We know you could be watching Saturday Night Live or... I don't know, what do you normally watch on Saturday? Something else, right? You could be watching whatever she would watch, but instead you're watching our show, and we love you for that, and we'll see you next week. Different guests, different uh, movie. I don't know who, don't know what, but it will be fun. See you next time. So, uh, Mindy, uh, you know, you think you might be able to spend some time with uh, Tangela to uh, help her improve her skating? Yeah, I've seen her skate. She could definitely use some help.